Atlanta isn't what we thought. It's not what they promised the city is. Do not enter the city. The Walking Dead. This big household name began as a comic, which was first released in October 2003, and has been producing more editions monthly ever since. It's been adapted to both a television series and video game. No, not this one. Telltale's The Walking Dead, alongside the original comic, and AMC's television show are both award-winning and critically acclaimed. Adaptations are not the easiest thing to do. Many a failed game has come from great intellectual properties, even some from Telltale. Why have the narratives of The Walking Dead been so successful in translation? In this video, I plan to break down The Walking Dead universe to its essence, detail the attention to medium within each respective narrative, and compare the comic's narrative form to its adaptations, in hopes of pinpointing why The Walking Dead has been so successfully adapted to both television and video game format. As a warning, there will be spoilers ahead. The Walking Dead as a whole is dark. It's grim and gritty and holds a sense of depth and realism. Nobody knows what started it all, but the dead started coming back to life. As society crumbles, the world becomes desolate, and mankind has been spread thin and forced into hiding. Everybody knows they will die, it's just a matter of when. The past becomes nostalgia, and prospects of the future are limited to day-by-day -day decisions. The Walking Dead aren't the zombies, they're the survivors. These people have been thrust into hell, where death is always knocking at the door. In these grim times, it shifts individualism into a sense of oneness. Each survivor embodies the human race, struggling hard to land on some stable footing, even if only for a moment. The people are what make the stories worth hearing. They're both the biggest threat and the only thing to cling to. The driving force in each story has been achieving a sense of normalcy in a world unknown, and surviving for other survivors. Maintaining and building relationships is also a strong theme. When talking about the creation of the series, writer Robert Kirkman had this to say. The cool thing about zombie films is that, you know, well, they're, they're nice, riveting, you know, pieces of entertainment, but uh, at the end of it, they just kind of end. I always wanted to see what happened next. Morals get twisted and people's actions that they would think are normally wrong end up being the right thing to do. In order to get into adaptation, we need to talk about the original form. The comic is the origin of the Walking Dead universe. Everything starts here in the comic. Situations are dark, like the visuals, and hold a lot of weight. The story follows police officer Rick Grimes as he wakes up in a hospital after being shot in the line of duty. He's been out for some time and begins to stumble around. The hospital is empty and has been locked down. When he gets outside, he discovers the dead are walking. Rick heads off into the city in search of his wife and son. Eventually, Rick finds them with a group of survivors, including his partner, Shane. While the world of zombies, or walkers as they call them, causes trouble throughout, the biggest conflicts are interpersonal. Friends become enemies quickly. Everything happens quickly. The comic is fast-paced and chaotic, developing and ending new story arcs rapidly. The comic was discovered by Frank Darabont. Browsing, I had not heard of Kirkman, I had not heard of this comic book. I walked in and I saw uh, the first trade paperback. I was immediately drawn to it because it's zombies right up my alley, you know. And by the following day, I was calling my agent saying, can we try to get the rights to this? Can we look into this? Because I think this is, this could be a very, very good show for television. When it came to adaptations, Kirkman wasn't too worried. I came at The Walking Dead like very open to them putting, you know, dogs in it that shoot lasers out of their eyes or whatever they wanted to, you know, and I knew that I would have a certain amount of ability to prevent that from happening and mm -hmm. it's kind of my life's mission on the show to make sure that that doesn't happen. While it's important to note that a successful adaptation relies heavily on the individuals involved with a great cast, director, special effects department, the list could go on. Put the gun down! This discussion of successful adaptation will be heavily focused on the narrative aspects. When watching the show, it's very clear that sometimes the comic acts as a storyboard for the show. Notably, the TV show both strongly sticks to what's at the core of the comic, while freely making very large changes. For instance, in both stories, when Rick is reunited with his wife and son, 
we get a chance to meet Shane, Rick's partner on the police force and family friend. He's been taking care of both Carl and Lori in Rick's presumed death. Jesus. While they once got romantic, it stopped immediately as Lori is reunited with her husband. As tensions mount in the first chapter, Shane punches Rick. Shane runs off, and Rick tries to talk to Shane in the woods. Shane points his rifle at Rick and yells at Rick for coming back, how he and Lori could have been together, and how he could have raised Carl. Ultimately, as Shane sobs and yells maniacally, prepared to fire, Rick's 12-year-old son shoots him in the neck. We barely get to meet Shane, and all this narrative is revealed to us moments before he's killed. The TV show instead holds on to him for two seasons, playing with the awkward love triangle. The show creates new narrative opportunities for Shane's downward spiral. He nearly rapes Lori, contemplates shooting Rick, shoots Otis in the leg to outrun the walkers, plans to take off with Andrea, and even murders a teenager in order to get Rick alone in the woods. The show dives deep into its own plot lines and ultimately resolves similarly to the comic, bringing forward momentum to the narrative. By keeping Kirkman heavily involved in the writing, the show maintains the same purpose and weight, with different versions of what could have happened presented in a filmic matter. The show captures the gore and horror of the comic when it has to, but decidedly keeps its focus on the human element, making this show not just another zombie flick. I guess I'm losing hope. But like I said, it's all about slim chances now. And a slim chance is better than none. AMC's translation was successful, but more surprisingly is Telltale's adaptation. Video game adaptations are notoriously bad. When you're dealing with a visual medium, the technique is show, don't tell. With the added element of participant interactivity, it becomes do, don't show. The game presents you with the Walking Dead universe, but rather than seeing how characters respond to the grim circumstances, the game allows you to put yourself in those shoes. The Walking Dead universe is a thing where, you know, you see Rick's story, you know, and, and you've seen pretty much every minute of Rick's story. Right. And I don't think, the way the show works is we're changing things up. So you're seeing a different Rick story. But this uh, game is very much set in the universe of the comic book series. And if you were playing with Rick, you would basically be doing the same stuff, or you would be playing some kind of BS game that doesn't really have anything to do with the comic series. Why are so many games so linear? Well, this is a matter of budget and scalability. Let's imagine you create a story that players can play through, visualized as points connected by lines. You go from point to point, channel down narrow paths where choice is nowhere to be found. Now let's say at the beginning of this game, you allow players to make a choice. This choice fundamentally changes the entire story. Since you can't simply use the story you've made for the first path, you need to create the content for an entirely different story. Now imagine a game riddled with choices. You end up with a tangled narrative web that is unwieldy to design and create meaningful story out of. Often, games that offer you more freedom offer less explicit narrative. That is to say, writers didn't sit down for hours generating hundreds and thousands of storylines that you could go through, but rather let you create your own story through implicit narrative. Tangents aside, Telltale actually creates a relatively linear game, where you still feel like you have an impact. The trick here being the illusion of choice. The game is structured around a linear narrative, where choices send you deviating for varying amounts of time. While some of the choices you make change something for a large period of time, others just make some text appear on screen. It's not always obvious which choices are which, and thus the illusion is upheld. Starting the game off, we play as Lee Everett, who's on his way to jail for a murder. Well, I reckon you didn't do it then. Why do you say that? You know, I've driven a bunch of fellas down to this prison. Lord knows how many. Usually it's about now I get the, I didn't do it. The conversation is interrupted when the officer crashes the car into a walker on the road, leaving Lee unconscious. Being chased by the walking dead, Lee hops over a fence into a nearby yard. After searching through the house for anybody who could help, he hears a voice on a hand radio. Daddy? We're introduced to Clementine, a nine-year-old girl who's waiting in her treehouse for her parents to come home. While all signs point to her parents being dead, you help her survive and try to find her parents, traveling throughout Alabama, grouping up with strangers along the way. The core of the game's interaction is dealing with tough choices that will inevitably upset somebody in your group. 
or could bring negative consequences down the line. How about you help us clear the way and we'll take you and your daughter out of here and down to my family's farm. I'm not a dad. I'm a neighbor. Her parents are out of town. Let's get going. Staying put for too long is a mistake. So it's just you and your daughter then? Oh, not his daughter. He was her neighbor. Honey, do you know this man? Yes. Okay then. Well, looks like you hurt your leg pretty bad there. How'd this happen? Car accident. That's so. Where are you headed before the car accident? Just uh, out for a drive. Hmm. Can I give you a piece of advice? What is it? I don't know who you are or what you did, but you better become a better liar and fast. The strongest relationship in the game is the one between you and Clementine. The game makes you want to act like a father to her, protecting her, teaching her, trying to make sure that she gets along in a world that you don't fully comprehend yourself. The world of The Walking Dead does not care about you. Like, it does not care that you're a little girl, it doesn't care that you're an old man, it doesn't care that you have a family, it does not care. So to be true to the license, you have to sort of, we have to acknowledge that. The game is divided much like the TV show, into episodes and seasons. Season one is released. It's five episodes, each of which takes about three hours to play through. At the end of each episode, the game shows you a list of key moral choices you've made during the episode, and compares it to the choices of other players. While it's a bit immersion-breaking, this allows you to justify or question your choices, or perhaps the choices of others. Telltale's game draws heavily from the comic, both visually and thematically, but really becomes its own with the added level of interactivity. By using the illusion of choice, the designers can craft a cinematic quality narrative where you feel your choices have impact. It also allows you to step into the dark, and see where you surprise yourself. Overall, The Walking Dead questions the humanity of those involved. It asks you what it means to be human, and how easily it can all be taken away from you. Both adaptations successfully encompass this. It goes to show, people will up and go mad when they believe their life is over. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. What are you yammering on about? 